Hey guy, what do you yeah. think of the grouse man featured product on the stand today? Kind of liking this, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's make heel. Heel good, Valter good. What else do you need? Yeah, but you're not driving it. You get the fast track. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what I'm about anymore. Do you know much about it? Nothing. To be honest with you, not a thing. Right, well, we're going to um, find out. We've asked James and Mike to come up and uh, talk us through. They're in the background there, talk us through the, the moors because we didn't see much point in having a featured product on our stand where we truthfully didn't know an awful lot about. So, something we want to find out about. Yeah. So. We're going to sneak up here, get these boys to talk <laughs> to us and explain a little bit about it. Hey guys! Alright guys. You as well? Yeah, very well, thanks. Yourselves? Lethal. Not so bad. Very good. So guys, um, we've uh, brought you up to talk us around this new Pro Glide series of mowers. I think uh, James is going to talk about the front mower and then Mike, yeah. you're going to start off and talk us around all the designing and all of, tell us all the all the lovely hidden surprises and gems and the, the back moors. Yes, you're more than welcome, guys. Right, talk us around these moors, Mike. What is the, what's the crown jewel here? What, what are you trying to sell? Well, as a, as a manufacturer, we're trying to um, produce the full range of equipment. We brought the moors to the marketplace four years ago. Yeah. Um, they've done really, really well. At the moment, we produce three models. We've got our F31 100 there in the front, and on the rear here we've got the B9000, which is our butterfly mower. So we also offer a R3100, which is a 3.1 meter rear mower. All of the mowers have very, very similar features. So if we look at the design of the mower here, where it pivots and carries, it's a pull type system. So the mower's got loads and loads of flotation, so I might demonstrate here what it can do. So when it's working, it can go forward to back, it can go left to right, and it can also move like this. So mm -hmm. you've got a huge amount of movement in the bed of the mower. The beauty of that is that it, it flotates independent of the movement of the tractor, so it contours the ground at all times, so you get a perfectly even cut. On the butterfly moors here, by looking at the front beam, we've got a telescopic arm. So when you're matching a front and rear moor together, you've generally got a 300 mil overlap. But with this system here, you've got an additional 300 mil overlap. So when climbing up the side of a bank or a hill, you can telescope your arm to give you more overlap to stop striping on the ground. The bed itself is 3.1 meter cut. On the end here, we've got baffle control for a conditioner. So by simply pulling the clip, we can increase or decrease the pressure on the uh, yeah. rotor. Outside covers are made of a plastic type material. So when you impact on the hedge line or rows, it doesn't bend or crumple up. And by simply do pushing the clip up, they will fold in this position. So they're out of the way. On the end of the beds here, you can see where we can drain the beds, which we recommend once a season. The beds themselves contain six litres of oil. Six litres of oil? Six litres of oil. A lot of oil in there. There is. <laughs> the, the, the norm would be two and a half to three litres in a, in a 10 foot moor. Um, when we set about building beds, we wanted a very heavy duty bed. We are on 25 mil gears. And tw 25 mil gears wouldn't just be normal now? Anywhere you'd be looking between 15 and 17 mil would be normal in the beds. Um, probably over the years, a lot of mowers have done a lot of time and the big fear in buying a second hand mower would be the bed, whether it's damaged, uh, whether it's worn. We've always maintained huge resale value in the McHale product through the years. If this machine would probably run with a contractor for maybe five to six seasons and then he'll replace for a new outfit, we want something that will still have a good market value for a farmer yeah. and he'll feel happy that the mower will be reliable after that amount of work. Looking towards the back of the machine here, you can see we have a steel tying conditioner. Um, under the hood here, we have um, a conditioner which is free hanging. The beauty of that is it's not held from the top, you get a lot less wear. When you fire up your conditioner, the tying itself locks back against the rotor, so it's quite a good feature. Got your spreading vanes here at the back, so by simply opening up your swart boards to full width, the conditioner tines will push the grass against the veins and give you a full width spread. 
This side is a more square, so it stops you throwing grass into the crop that's uncut. And this side is actually tapered out at an angle, so it marries in with the spread of the front mower. So the complete ground is covered. Ooh. The gearbox itself, looking here from the drive line, so you've got a 1000 RPM coming from the back of your tractor through a star profile heavy duty shaft. That comes down here into the gearbox. All McHale mowers are gearbox drive, there is no chain or belt. On the conditioner here, you've got two speeds, so you can run at maximum speed of 1000 RPM, which kicks the grass up on a heavy crop. You've then got the option of slowing it down to 700, so if you're in a lighter crop, it will leave a more uniform conditioned row. Mm -hmm. Or if you were doing maybe whole crop or um, a clover crop, it's less aggressive yeah. on the material. Yeah. Your final option then is you can actually turn your conditioner off by moving the selector lever to the middle. This is a nice feature if you wanted to clean up a field after maybe cattle or cows. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's just quite useful for that. It's a big topper all the same. Mm. It's a big topper, but you know, we, 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 we've, seen, we've seen dairy customers uh, where they've, they've front mowers on all year round. Yeah, yeah. So then into the, into the base of the unit itself then. Yes. Um, that's, you just put a lot of work into that there and getting it to, that, that it's working as a, I suppose, like a pull type system. Yes. And there's a lot of strength in that little bit of like, like all, <laughs> metal like in all, front of us. <laughs> like, like all McHale product guys, we, we build something to, to, to last. Um, a majority of our marketplace at the moment whether we, is contractor market. And, and these guys are doing a lot of work. We'll have customers doing maybe four and a half, five thousand 5,000 acres per year with these machines. So they want a, a very heavy duty, strong machine. Um, they want it very simple for putting on and off the tractor. So the beauty of this machine here, you've got the parking stands underneath here, which by simply pressing your foot about, will go down onto the ground. So the mower can be actually parked vertically folded up yeah. or completely folded down. From a hydraulic point of view, we need three double acting spools. So it's quite simple. So any tractor with three double acting spools can operate the mowers. You've got individual lift left to right and you've got telescopic arm in and out. And the third option is through this valve here, we can actually move our mowers together. On the rear of the machine, you've got lights as standard. You've got your toolbox here in the headstock, which holds your left and right blades. So when the mowers themselves fold up, they go past 90 degrees to keep the width of the tractor and the maximum going down the road. So it's a very, very simple system. Your bed pressure is simply set through uh, the pipe there with the tap so we normally build our press bed pressure up to about 130 bar after we fitted the tractor and then reduce it and drop it off when taking it off and for those who don't know where 130 bar is we have a little indicator there just to <laughs> just to remind them so so the key points to take home here mate from the McHale Moor is strength 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 like strength. yes strength strength and simplicity, and simplicity. you know we <laughs> We, we, have, we have two two simple rules in our house, build a machine strong enough and use the best components money can buy. And if you do them simple rules, you won't go too far wrong. Is the Fusion still flying? Fusions are flat out, guys. We're, we're definitely number one in the marketplace with Fusions, but staying there is the big challenge. So every year we're updating the Fusions. We're always coming with new technology. We went from a Fusion 1 to a Fusion 2. We're now in a Fusion 3 with three different models in the range. And... Um, yeah, the, the, the Fusion is really, really doing its job, um, again, on the worldwide market. I have to ask the question um, that a lot of people will be thinking. I mean, McHale has been making Fusions for, what, 17-odd years now? Yes, indeed. Zero Two was the first of the Fusions. And as you said, our number one in the market. Yes. To bring mowers to a market was a very bold thing to do because it's... How will I describe that? There's, there's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of competition, um, but the, the farm machinery business is going more maybe like the car business. You need the range. And as a company, we need the range to be a good supplier to our importers, to be a good supplier to our dealers. We need to have the complete range. So it's our plan in the next five years to expand our range. We're going well down the road of the mowers. We introduced the rakes two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And as well as that, we have tremendous support from our customers. Um, People who would have bought bale wrappers off us 30 years ago um, have now bought balers, have now bought mowers, and, and they love the product. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's it's a great uh, a great thing for us to to keep expanding the range. Well, we were having a bit of fun here um, at Grassman HQ last week and um, borrowed a little 
a little 991 B C yes. <laughs> yes, BC, model. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and let me tell you, she wasn't made yesterday. No, no. And that little wrapper tuned up to our little dudes didn't mess no. a beat. Fan Simple. Fantastic product, guys. Um, 991 basically built in 1991. BC bail wrapper cable. <laughs> I did but, not decide yeah, what that very, is. Very, very simple, yeah. But the ethos is still the same. Still the same, guys. Still the same. Yeah. Little bits of tweaks, little bits of changes. We, we, we gave them a birthday, for the want of a better word, maybe two years ago, just to make them look a bit more modern. Mm -hmm. Um, there'll be hundreds of these things around the world that'll have maybe 150, 160,000 bales done. That's mad. And they're still in everyday use. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it, didn't, it didn't mess a beat. Never. It didn't, and that is where the big heel name started, exactly. isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Well, look, Mike, thank you for your time. We're going to go and catch up with uh, James because he's very passionate about this front mower and I could see him swinging it there a minute ago. He's see, just, yeah, he's he's just, just eager. He's <laughs> itching to show us what this mower can do. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Hey, James, you, how come you were bouncing to get talking about the front mower? Did you design something in this or what? Gareth, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, all the, all the design was done with your research and development guys back in the factory in Mayo. Mike talked us around uh, the Blackmores and the, the take home message was strength and simplicity. Well, Mikhail has always been known for strength and simplicity. Even from the 991B rapper that started off in the late 80s, early 90s. Mikhail was all, the rapper that time was known as a heavy duty machine. So. But like, let's cut to the chase. Strength and simplicity is, is well and good and a set of Blackmores front mowers was going to make or break you well we'd have looked at the competition out there and other makes and that and just go through the mower we say from the very the front of the mower yep. we start here at the headstock you. you can see them the main drive is all heavy duty drive through the hole of the actual machine so the all star profile tubing on the pt war shield drives you have your main clutches in the drives also if you go around the far side, you can see your drive shaft is coming off your main 90 degree gearbox. It's coming into your gearbox here that is a direct drive down into your bed. So again, it's totally gear driven, direct drive the whole way down to your bed, to your cutter bar, and get your drive across into the whole lot of the distance. And there was the no messing with the gearboxes because they come from a supplier of the gearboxes in the Fusion. Am the I gearboxes, right? we use the same, we try and use the same suppliers for most parts, again, a simplicity, it's companies we know. These gearboxes would have come from the same company. We use the gearboxes and the fusions and the, um, the balers. So again, starting here from the headstock, we use no A-frame on the actual machine. So it's totally into your linkage arms, hook on your balls and down to the top link. So you have one single acting spool here to work your mower up and down. So setting up your mower, the simplest way, again, the way to set them up is your parking stand. Roughly have that 50 mil off the ground mm -hmm. at the top of your toe. So that's your actual lift arms set in place. Again, you lock your lift arms in position then. That's your lift arms done. There's mm -hmm. no check chains to connect on to the front of your tractor or that. That's the more set up. And no A-frame? No A-frame at all. So again, it's just drive straight in. You having to be looking at the top here, or wondering where the airframe is, or it's on another tractor. That's the beauty of it, and its simplicity. And again, it's keeping costs down as well. So what you have going from your airframe to your main chassis, the next stage of movement that you have in your mower is your actual bed itself. So your main frame is coming out here. It's a pull type system more than as well. So a pull type system, you're pulling the mower all the time. You get a way better cut. She followed the ground contour an awful lot better as well. So your stage of movement here, your actual bed of your mower has a transverse movement here of 17 degrees. I 17 degrees. 17 degrees. Wow. So that gives a fair movement. If you're on slopes or here you going. But you would need that there because we have just parked on the side of a hill and yeah. if we had that down in the float, she, she would need a it good gives bit a of good, that. It gives a good, that's one thing. You see, flotation is one, thing that Mikhail really concentrated on when they were designing the mower. If you have your flotation right and correct, your bed, your chassis, or if you're mower, the whole lot then follows suit after that, takes all the pressure off everything else. 
So getting back to our stage of movement, we've 17 degrees up and down this way. You've also another pivot point here that lets you more go back and forward 12 to 13 degrees. Okay. So the more can actually physically move back left to right as well. The same as the back more? Same as the back more. You have this compensator here lengthen as well, so when you're, if you're on hilly going, she always brings the more back to the level position again when you get back out onto your level going. Again, <laughs> there's no accumulator, there's no pressure clock in front. When you put your mower into flow position in your spool valve, these two springs here take over. So that's what's following the ground contour then as well. So the actual mower itself is a 500 mil adaptive transverse movement up and down. Up and down. So like if you're going into a very deep hollow, she has that movement to go into a deep hollow, which many other mowers may say a push type system or that, it might just follow the ground as nice. Whereas that mower, you will physically see it and get them, you know, you'll see it actually going down and moving in bare ground. So if you have a rougher type field, it's an ideal opportunity to see that. You'll also notice here as well, all quick fit blades we use in the mower. So again, we use um, a lever here on the side, which is also used as a tool for adjusting your spreading veins. That comes with the mower. You put it under your, your disc and you lever it down. Pull out your disc, yeah. out your, your blade. The other thing we use on the actual... She's going to float that nice though, Gary. We'll not need that. No, you you won't need, need it. it. The you other thing that's blades. there on you know? the actual... Um, <laughs> your stud for holding your blade is a kind of a cam type stud. Yes. We yeah. sell these mowers in a lot of different countries. There's some sandy soil conditions, yeah, there's some yeah. stony conditions. With the cam type stood on this, your blade won't flip off your sturdy conditions. So when you open your lever, you need to push the blade back right, and, and pull it out. It's the a simple idea, but again, different, you know, it's feedback we get from different customers and that in different countries. If she does shear a key, what's the turnaround to get her going? So you're talking you? roughly 15, 20 minutes. Aye, so it's... A 19 socket, lift off this cap. Better than a bed. Lift up your disc. Oh yeah, it's, do, it's doable in the field. It's, like. it's do, oh, doable yeah. in the field. Nineteen yeah, span yeah. is all you need. Yeah, yeah. It's just designed for mowing grass. Get grass mowed. It's just yeah. Without too much. Without grass any mold. drama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. She's no drama machine, isn't it? I like the idea that if you know, yes, look, with a top of the range two, three, four volt, we're here. I understand that, and all the bells and whistles but you don't with the it. best one in the world I go out with that tractor or any year buy that tractor and marry it up to those moors and I have a little bit of a, a boo-boo right. with the tractor the yeah. tractor goes down yeah yeah we could pull out the old 7810 now I'm not saying the 7810 would be under pressure but in light crop you could pull out the old 7810 you've something to put your moors on you don't need your get, fancy get, yeah, buses. Oh. you don't need all yeah. this you could use her for a day or a couple of days till some guy got your track up and running, because that yeah. happens. Oh, it does. It does, it does, yeah. yeah. It and does, if you does. were under real pressure, you could probably hire a tractor, and that means you can hire, as long as you have three double acting spools, you're you good to mow. go. With these mowers, guys, we'd kind of recommend 80 horsepower per bit. Okay. So most guys out there working a front and a rear, a double, we call it, 160, 170 horsepower. Now, again, different ground conditions, we're in Helio going with that, you might need a bit more, but in generally, so you're needing 160, 170 horsepower. 240 really to run your yeah, triples. Yeah, you're, 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 you're talking yeah. 240, 250. Yeah. 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 To be comfortable. Like, but, but again, just know. on the bed there as well, there's a, a very good overlap on your blades as well. There's a very good angle on that blade to give it a... Again, you can adjust your height Is of your blade. Is it a McHale only blade? To it's see a McHale only blade, yeah. yeah. And the bed itself there as well, like it's a McHale spec bed. Like, so we spec the gears up 25 mil. We put that safety feature in the hub also. We try and make the machine to the best of capability that we can and that's why there's no other options on this machine. She comes a standard with the side marking lights, LED lights, all the heavy duty drive line PTOs. Um, this is what you get. That's what you get there. Yeah. What you see is what you get there. What you see is what you get. Even a small feature there on the cover of the front of the mower. We use weights there in the front just to keep the... Keep it seen keep that it all right yeah. when I was you know, flicking it up yeah, over there. Yeah. And it does give us, you know, because some of them can go back and I get damaged. They can get damaged yeah, very easily, yeah. yeah, yeah, so they can. Um, I, need boys, I need grass, I need grass, boys. Change your oil in your beds. He did say you could top after. with it, see him on the top there. <laughs> I never see his next grass. <laughs> well, look, James, thank you very much. Well, thank uh, you, lads. Thanks James, for thank you. you and Mike coming up and installing this here. And look, 
the weather sadly to change uh, tonight, but hopefully within the next couple of days we'll get this into the field and get we'll ripping. And then we'll really tell you what we think. Uh, well, <laughs> we're open to opinions. We're open to opinions. I'd say you'll be trying hard to, to get it on the field. We're open to opinions. <laughs> no, thanks very much, lads. Lovely. Thanks, Thank you. Enjoy Thank the demo. You.